Good morning and welcome to worship at Lutheran Church of the Incarnation on this 10th Sunday after the Pentecost. We offer this worship service for you in your home. Today's theme, we hear the story of Jesus walking on water on the Sea of Galilee and uh, focus a little bit on the story of St. Peter who uh, enthusiastically jumps out on the water and attempts to walk to Jesus and has some problems with that. And uh, Peter's problem is a kind of a lack of faith, um, a doubt in, him, in himself and in a, a, a focus on himself that when he looks to Jesus, things are all right. But when he focuses too much on, on himself uh, and his own abilities, uh, that's when he sort of has some problems. And that's, that's our theme. That's the focus of what we're about as God's people. For Christ offers us um, his grace and his love, his guidance and his support um, through all that we go through in life. Uh, and, and that is enough. And that's what we're about as God's people. Um, so we pray that the service is enriching for you. You can follow along in the bulletin that's on our website at lcidavis.org. Our Give tab is there as well. We're grateful for whatever you can do to support our ministries. Um, and we will begin our worship this morning with our gathering music. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. Here. Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Today's reading is from 1 Kings chapter 19. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong, that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, 
he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, where you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Melaloa, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Today we will read from Psalm 85 responsibly. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, Truly your salvation, salvation is very close to those who, who fear you, you that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness, faithfulness shall spring up from the earth and righteousness shall look down from, from heaven. heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself, to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Good morning. So this morning, I brought a baseball with me. Now, we are a huge baseball family. My son plays, my husband coaches. Uh, we watch the Giants, um, and we're super glad that baseball is back. Um, but what I want to do this morning is I want to think, I want you to think of as many sports as you can that use balls. So I made a little bit of a list to help you, um, but go, ho I'll go ahead at home and shout out as many as you can think of. So here's the list I came up with. Soccer, basketball, baseball, dodgeball, volleyball cricket, rugby, golf, tennis, table tennis, or ping pong. And you probably can even think of some more. That's just a few that I could think of. Now, if you've ever played any of those sports, you might remember your coach saying, not only one time, but probably a million times, keep your eye on the ball. 
And I know that's especially important in baseball because what can happen if you don't keep your eye on the ball? Well, you would miss it if you were trying, if you were batting, but it could also hit you and it could hurt you. Maybe a black eye or a broken bone. So in today's Bible lesson, Simon Peter, one of Jesus's disciples, he kind of, he kind of learned the same lesson about keeping his eye on the ball. So Jesus had had a really long, hard day and he had been teaching a huge crowd and he said to his disciples, you know, let's, let's go and, and let's get away and just relax a little while, uh, relax a little while. So they did. And Jesus went off to have some alone time. And later that night, he saw the boat. It was quite a distance offshore and kind of started getting windy. And he thought probably it was time to head back. So he did. And you may have heard this story before. Jesus started walking on the water out to the boat. And his disciples got nervous. And they said, oh my gosh, it's a ghost. And Jesus said, don't be afraid. It's me. Have some courage. But then Peter, being Peter, he called out, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. So Peter climbed out of the boat, he started walking, and then he started getting a little nervous. He looked up and the wind was blowing and the waves were crashing, and he started getting nervous and he started sinking. And he said, Lord, save me. And Jesus reached out, caught Peter by his hand and said, Peter, why did you doubt? So the moral of this story is, just like you need to keep your eye on the ball, when you're playing baseball and any other sport, we sometimes need to be reminded to keep our eyes on Jesus because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is how we will someday go home to heaven. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for sending people like Peter to help teach us a lesson. When we start to doubt, remind us of this story and remind us we should never doubt you. Amen. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sat in at the confluence of Bear Creek and Cash Creek. Jacob, Lucas, and I were invited by friends of Lucas to go kayaking last weekend. It was wonderful. I had no idea Cash Creek was such a thundering river. I always thought about the casino whenever I heard the name. The three of us were in inflatable kayaks, which made things interesting on our six-mile trek down the river. Lucas' friend, Owe, his stepdad, Tim, and a couple of young bucks named Kent and Nathan came along, who were experienced kayakers, something we needed in the end. Jacob and I started on the tandem kayak, that, but that didn't last long because we were too heavy and, well, frankly, not very harmonious. As we approached each of the class two rapids, we went down. There were clear instructions about how to navigate him, about them go right here, avoid this rock, go straight. We were always told to point your kayak straight at the rapids, no matter what, paddle and lean forward rather than backwards. If you hit a strainer, uh, that is a tree branch or piece of wood in the water, try to go up, if at all possible, rather than down. And if you get thrown out of your kayak, float down river with your feet in front of you to avoid hitting anything in the water. When it's safe, get back in. And most of all, have fun. Well, we needed the instructions because we were not experienced kayakers. And we did have fun, but there were some bumps along the way, both figuratively and literally. Jacob and I got stuck right away on a rock with our kayak sideways and had to kind of work our way off of it, which was a little annoying. At one rapid, I followed Tim down one section to watch him up on his kayak and land in the water. I just avoided him to the right only to hit a giant rock and flip up and do a loop-to-loop -loop and launch from my boat into the water and landed in the 
Cache Creek. I think I ended up somewhere near the bottom of the creek. It was one of the most dramatic things that's happened to me in a long time. And the rest of the group told me about this. Um, and they all had their spills too. But when I came back up, I saw the kayak and my paddle floating near me. Certainly felt the current of the water, which was fairly significant, and wasn't sure what to do. Float with my feet up in front of me, get back in the boat, <laughs> watch out for that rock. There's a strainer, I think, maybe over there. <laughs> my mind was racing. Normally, I'm pretty comfortable in the water. We own a pool, after all, and I was decked out with safety equipment, a helmet, a life jacket, but still, I started to freak out a little. How am I supposed to get back in this thing? Eventually, I noticed Nathan and Kent surrounding me with their kayaks, guiding me towards the shore. Somehow they'd stabilized my inflatable kayak with their um, the much more sophisticated kayaks. And I just couldn't pull myself into the boat. It was too high. There was nothing to push off to get myself up over the edge of the kayak. Nathan suggested that I kick my leg up over the edge, which I tried, but then my leg was way up over my head and I couldn't get my weight up. And he said to prop my right arm onto his kayak. And I just said, I, I, I don't think I can do it. I just was, I had one of those moments where I thought, I, I don't know what's going to happen here. Kent was on this side of my boat, and I saw him reach his hand over. Here, take my hand. And I reached across my body and took his hand and pulled myself up like this into the boat with the paddle over the edge. And I think everybody in our group breathed a sigh of relief like the whale is finally back in the boat. They came and checked on me, which I appreciated. I was okay. My body was intact, although my dignity may have suffered a little. But hey, we were having fun on the water. I had to think of this story when reading the well-known story of Jesus walking on the Sea of Galilee out to visit his disciples where they were in a boat at night in the middle, in the middle of a great storm. Not so much the part about Jesus walking on the water and how on earth could he have done that, but more about Peter. I could really relate to him and how he must have felt. <laughs> Peter was super enthusiastic when he saw Jesus, even though the rest of the disciples were really scared when they saw him. They weren't sure what they were looking at. They thought it might have been a ghost, and maybe Peter felt like he needed to prove something, to jump out in the water and show how, how you know, great he was in being able to do this. He jumps out in the water and fails miserably. It wasn't so much that Peter was incapable of pulling this off. It's more, more like, I think, that he lost his nerve. He became panicked and focused on himself. And once that happened, he was literally sunk. But Jesus comes to the rescue, suggesting perhaps that Peter focus on him reaching out for him, ye of little faith. It's as if Jesus wants to say, if you focus on me, Peter, everything will be all right. Take my hand. I got you. But if you focus on yourself and your abilities, if you try to do this by yourself on your own, you will falter every time. That's the mistake we make all too often in our lives. We all reach those panicked moments when we aren't so sure how things are going to turn out, whether literally or proverbially, drifting down the stream, their head near or underwater, wondering what's next. That moment in kayaking was like that for me, just a little bit, not entirely, but a little. But it's in those moments that Jesus comes to us and provides us what we need to overcome our fears and live our lives to the fullest. I am grateful for having friends who are willing to take time to rescue me, who want to take care of me and make sure I'm all right. 
It's important to keep those precious ones in mind, those who are there for us when we are down. Being on that big, gorgeous body of water made me think of two other things. One was the flowing nature of life itself. Cache Creek was kind of a metaphor for life itself. We are all in a river or creek of some sort, and we all have bumps and rocks to get over or through. Some moments are slow and boring, like the river. Others are lively and fun, maybe a little dangerous and exciting. It's all part of the journey of life that is a gift of God's grace. And it's usually better to plunge ahead into the rapids of life than to lean back, although it sometimes takes a lot of faith. The other was the beauty of God's creation, getting to know God through the spaces that God has made and loves. We live in a remarkable place out here in the West, and it is good to commune with God in nature. And as we saw in our text this morning, Jesus has this special relationship with the natural world, power over uh, natural forces, and so forth. Lastly, I had to think of God's promise to us in baptism. When we are splashed or sprinkled or dunked with water, along with a special promise at the beginning of our faith journey. Not entirely like getting thrown out of a kayak into Cache Creek, although not entirely unlike it either. This may have happened when we were young or when we were older. We, remember, we may remember our baptism or we may not, but through water and the word, special promises were spoken to us that no matter what happens to us, Nothing can separate us from God's love because we belong to God forever in Christ Jesus. And Christ comes to us in those scary moments in our lives when we're not so sure what's going to happen. He reaches out his hand and says, I got you. Amen. singing
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty creator, creator of heaven and earth. And earth. I, I believe, believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole of creation, let us pray for our shared world. For your whole church throughout the world, give courage in the midst of storms so that we see and hear Jesus calling. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy, your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Lord, in your mercy. Your mercy, mercy is great. For the nations and their leaders, may nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice and the justice that is the path to peace. Lord, in your mercy. Your mercy is great. For those in need, accompany all who are lonely, hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish, and support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering this day. Lord, in your mercy. Your mercy is great. For our congregation, you have gathered us here today as your people, and we thank you for this gift. We pray for those who are new to this community, for students and teachers preparing for a new school year, and for those struggling with unexpected hardships. Supply us generously with your grace for our life together. Lord, in your mercy. Your mercy is great. Lord God, we lift up those with special needs in our congregation and beyond. We pray especially for Carol Klipstein, Pat Wheeler, Linda Gatina and Gary Tooley, John Morin, Natalie Harrow, Michael Machuga, John Kerr, Mike Wilmer, and Michelle, Brian, and baby Rosemary. We also pray for those who've lost their lives to COVID-19 and those who mourn them. And we lift up Ruth Martin as she celebrates a birthday in the coming week. Bless and keep her in her next year of life, we pray. Lord, in your mercy. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who nurtured our faith. Make our faith burn bright and bold like holiday fireworks. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered by the Spirit into one body, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Sends us forth with hands to serve and give to make the earth a better place to live. The Lord sends us forth with hands to serve and give to make of all the earth a better place to live. The angels are not sent into our world of pain to do what we were meant to do in Jesus' name. That those to you and me and all who are made free. Help us, O Lord, we pray, to do your will today. 
God sent into our world of pain to do what we were meant to do in Jesus' name. That falls to you and me and all who are made free. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray, to do your will today. Let us pray. Gracious God, we, we offer, offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of the one who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, live your lives in Christ, rooted and built up in him, and abound in thanksgiving, and the blessing of the Holy be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, sharing Christ's light daily. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God, God and we will. will.